Well, I can tell you after three shots right now, you've hit the fairway every single time with your controlled swing. Okay. Yeah. All right. The other two swings, you've got one on the hazard each side, and let's just take a look at the dispersion here real quick just to kind of show that. Hey golfers, Drew Mahold and Thomas Campbell here in the Minnetonka Tour Van here at Second Swing Golf. And today we've got an interesting video for you. Thomas, um, what we're going to do today is I'm going to hit maybe three different swing speeds here, a bunch of drivers. We're going to see really how much of an impact it has, you know, gaining maybe that extra distance off the tee, but perhaps sacrificing some accuracy. Yeah, it's, it's fun to hit some bombs. I mean, it's fun if you've got a, a golf hole that's wide open and you maybe don't get punished if you hit it offline. But there's not many golf holes out there that are like that, unless you mm -hmm. play a Lynx golf course all, all the time that's fairly open. So it's important to get the ball in the fairway. So these PGA Tour golfers out on tour, you know, they're not actually swinging at max speed. They can, like sometimes Rory McIlroy will hit up on the ball with his driver and mm -hmm. try and bomb it as far as he can. But a lot of the times he'll kind of just hit a smooth swing and try and get it in the fairway. Mm -hmm. So you're going to be doing the hitting today. So we're going to get you to test with a smoother golf swing Kind of your normal golf swing, and then also a all-out fast golf swing to see how far you can hit your mm -hmm. drives. And we're going to find, take a look and see what happens to your dispersion, your spin rate, and even just your contact in general. And this would be a very, very interesting test. Yeah, because I mean, I'm, I've kind of always been now, the golf courses I play are most of the time not as difficult as, say, PGA Tour golf courses, but I've always been in the mindset, just kind of bomb it, see how far you can hit it, and then kind of take your losses if you do happen to be in trouble. But we'll see. Maybe this will tell me otherwise that laying back a little bit, playing more control is the right play. So uh, I'm excited for this. Uh, I'm probably going to get a good workout in too. Yeah, it's important to note too, the level of the golfer's skill level is really important. Mm -hmm. So if you maybe don't have a skill level that's as high as a tour player, you probably don't need to try and swing out of your shoes. Just try and smooth it down there in the fairway. Mm -hmm. These tour players, they're pretty good at finding a little club face. Right. And that's the end goal. Yep, absolutely. And I don't know if I'm, I, I would, actually I can confirm I am not as good at finding the center of the club face as those guys are. So. Uh, I'm excited. This will be very interesting, and maybe some golfers will learn something from this. All right, let's see you hit some bombs. Okay, Drew, we've got you set up on hole three at PGA National Golf Club. I've always wanted to play PGA National. Uh, hopefully, I get to play it in real life someday. Well, this <laughs> hole is a little bit tight at about a 300 yards, so it'll be kind of interesting to yeah. see what happens, see how many fairway shots you get in play. Mm -hmm. So let's hit some bombs. Uh, what we're going to do for today's test is we're going to cycle uh, through these different speeds. So I'm not going to get you to swing five in a row with fast speed. I'm going to get you to maybe just hit one smooth one, one fast one, okay. and then one more kind of controlled one. Okay. That way it can make this a little unbiased as opposed to you finding your golf swing. Okay, okay, perfect. Okay, so let's first start off here. This isn't do normal swing to start with. Okay. So ideally there's like a you know, three-ish mile an hour gap in swing speed here with each one. Well, we're going we're gonna to find that out. Yeah, hopefully that's the case. That's what I'm going to aim for. But anyway, we're going to... Normal swing. I'm just trying to hit the fairway here. Okay, so let's now go to a controlled swing. Okay. I hit a fairway, I think. <laughs> Ugly but effective. And let's give you a chance to go after it hard. Definitely some more ball speed there. Wow. I hit that really hit the fairway. Good. Bombed it. 330 yards. Okay, let's cycle back. Let's go, let's go normal swing. I'm going to change it up on you here. Let's go fast swing. Okay. That's a lot of speed. All right, well, <laughs> yeah, I should just go after it. <laughs> wow. There goes my theory of a controlled <laughs> swing is going to hit the fairway every time. Very nice. Okay. Let's go fast swing again. Look left. Ooh. Might be left too. Well, I can tell you after three shots right now, you've hit the fairway every single time with your controlled swing. Okay. Yeah. All right. The other two swings, you've got one on the hazard each side, and let's just take a look at the dispersion here real quick just to kind of show that. 
So you have controlled swing right here and fairway every single time. It's not very, it's not very wide. Notice it's only 15 yards right or left of center okay. here for this fairway. Um, your normal swing, you've got one <laughs> out to the right. Your fast swing, you've got one out to the left. Both these would be kind of considered kind of, you'd be playing out of the hazard with those. Yep. You had two you crushed there with your fast swing there too. So, so far, small sample size. Let's hit some more golf shots. Okay. Uh oh, that's a water ball. That was very open. Ooh, so come that's back. really interesting. You just said that was very open. Notice how it's actually only just right of the fairway. The shot before was very closed. <laughs> Notice that yep. was a, kind of a, a long way left. Oh man, that is over there. <laughs> Ooh, some, spe some uh, spin on that one. Yep. I did feel a little bit low on the face, but. Yep. High ball speed there. Uh, spin rate just kind of climbed a little bit, but that was still OK. Uh, let's do another fast swing. Another Back fast one. So right. we're four shots in. You can get to that 120 club speed. Oh, that's a lot of ball speed. And finally, normal swing. Oh, look at that. You good? Okay, so let's first take a look and see where you were catching it on the club face when you were swinging at it fast, slower, mm -hmm. and normal. So your normal golf swing, right here, pretty good, pretty close to the middle of the club face. You generally hit it slightly on, on, mm -hmm. the, on the toe side, so pretty good there. If we look at the fast swing, pretty much the same spot, mm -hmm. pretty, pretty kind of similar there. If we look at the controlled swing, actually kind of interesting. You're actually a little more on the, on the tall side there as well. Yeah. Um, so that's interesting there to kind of pay attention to hit location. For the most part, you're still catching it slightly yeah. high tall with all your golf shots. So that didn't really kind of change too much. Um, if we look at numbers, so if we're going to compare the differences between the, the three of them, we'll notice your control swing, your, your bumps per se were around about 105 miles an hour club speed. Yeah. Uh, your fast speed swing speed, you're at uh, 118 miles an hour. You got one, you cracked it right at 120 miles an hour. Uh, we'll notice, uh, if we scroll down here and look here, we can see it was this one here that cracked 120 and also cracked 180 ball speed. And we're gonna talk about that one because notice the spin rate was kind of a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. uh, but if we kind of jump back here and see that your efficiency, technically your, your smash factor was better with your normal swing. Control swing 150, fast swing 150. So I mean, pretty kind of interesting differences there. Yeah. Uh, one thing I kind of noticed here with your fast swing is your launch angle was actually a little lower. And that's because you had that one that you kind of had way, way over there to the, to the left side there, yeah. that you yeah. kind of missed over there to, to the left side. Um, you know, talking about this dispersion pattern, you can kind of see that your controlled swing, with the exception of this one here, yep. pretty straight. You basically yep. hit the fairway six out of seven times there can't say that with any of these other golf swings. No, no, I think, I mean, you can definitely see the benefit of, of you know, playing a more controlled swing, especially on a course where maybe you really need to hit a fairway. Um, and like we even mentioned, you know, I wasn't hitting the ball in the center of the face as well with my controlled swing, but the misses were not nearly as bad as, you know, a faster swing speed. You can see these other ones and that, those, <laughs> those ovals are pretty large. Yeah, definitely. I mean, for me, what stands out here is you still, close to 300 yards, mm -hmm. and you're in the fairway on a hole that's fairly tight. You yeah, that's, water actually, left. that's a pretty small fairway. Yeah, you got water left, you got junk over here to the right as well. Um, you now, we'll talk about these three shots you hit really well as well, because that's kind of interesting there. Um, jumping back to the numbers, it's kind of interesting, the faster you swung, the uh, more the spin will spun. So we notice spin rate at 2,500, when you're a controlled swing, you're about 1,700, and mm -hmm. your normal swing was about 2,100. Generally speaking, you swing faster, and you have more spin on the yeah. golf ball. So yeah. that's what we're seeing there on the spin rate. 
uh, we'll notice you, yes, you hit the ball further with your fastest swing, 320 yards on average, normal swing 312 and controlled swing uh, 293. I'm interested to take a look at other numbers. So this is swing stuff. Um, height, higher with the fast, sw fast swing, uh, lower with the controlled swing. You'd expect that because you swing faster, yeah. it's going to go further. Um, your club path, pretty similar into out. Um, your face angle, it's actually kind of interesting. With your controlled swing, you left that face angle a little bit more open, and that helped you out on your curve because when you catch the ball a little on the toe side, and then that club face is even kind of close to your path, the gear effect on that club is going to kick the ball over mm -hmm. to the left. So you can generate a lot that. of curve to the left. I could definitely feel that on my controlled swings on a few of them like that. Yeah, and you can see here that you had um, more curve to the left with the fast swing and less curve to the left with the control swing. So your spin axis is going to be kind of a, a, little, bit, a little bit tighter. Um, I want to talk about that spin rate because when you swung fast, there was this shot here that you had, that you, you know, hit really, really well. Um, so if you look at the numbers here, you can see it was, it was fairly straight. You smoked it, but what happened was your spin rate kind of mm -hmm. went up a little bit. So it's not always about, um, always about speed. If you're going to swing faster, you might actually have to dial that club in a little bit more. And we've optimized your current driver a little bit to make right. it a little anti-left for you as well. Um, but you definitely want to optimize that spin and launch if you're going to swing faster. Right, because that's the, the, I mean, you get in a windy day, swinging hard like that, um, that can be a serious penalty with extra spin like that. Whereas my control swing, while I maybe wasn't catching it perfect every time, um, it's going to be lower and a wind on a windy day won't affect it as much. Yeah. Um, if we look here, let's talk about the three good shots that you hit that you, you, you hit really well. So if you look at your fast swing here, you got this one here, this one here, and this one here. Notice how the spin rate kind of stayed down on those mm -hmm. shots there, and that's why they were kind of going a little bit further. Um, pretty, pretty solid shots right there. So no doubt you can hit the fairway, but it was three out of seven times. Mm -hmm. So you yep. were... And I had two of them for sure. I mean, you had one, yeah. you know, basically in the trees left and flirting with the hazard. The other one's in the hazard. So uh, you can definitely see the sort of the, the risk reward of really going all out because there's almost as equal of a chance of hitting the fairway as there is, you know, taking a penalty shot, essentially. Yeah, you were batting under 50% on hitting the fairway with your, with your fast swing. Um, you were basically five or six out of seven mm -hmm. with your controlled swing. And then your, your normal swing is kind of interesting because you had, you had a couple that you kind of had mm -hmm. left and right here, um, but then you had a few that were maybe a little bit closer to the middle there as well. Yeah. But you can generally see that it's going to go further if you swing faster. Um, a couple of bad shots with each club, yeah. um, but maybe the bad shots with the controlled swing still might have still been kind of in play. <laughs> uh, looks like you've got to have to hit through some trees coming through oh, yeah. there, but it's not in the, in, in the water or in, in the hazard there. Um, so it's important to note because golf course holes are designed differently. Yeah. So this hole here, for example, you'll notice you, you know, you kind of just short of where the water is there. So if you're trying to do a controlled swing, you would probably hit a club that you would maybe hit at. Notice the water starts at about 300. So you would probably hit a shot that you're not going to hit at 300 yards. Yeah. And that also, not only are you getting a good chance to hit the fairway, but you're taking the water out of play. Right. So that's a little more kind of course management yeah. piece there as well, because you're taking the water out of play, even if you don't hit it perfect. Right. Yep. If you're going for a riskier shot, you're bringing that water into play and you're bringing a little, a little more trouble into play there as well. Yeah, yeah. definitely the course management piece on this particular hole, there's, there's certainly the, the benefit of not hitting driver. Um, but then one thing to note too, golfers, a lot of golfers watching this, you know, aren't playing courses where the hole is that tight and there's that much trouble around most of the time. Uh, most of the time you might be hitting it into a different fairway on some of those that are way right or left, you know. Uh, I'm, I frequently do that and I'm used to that, so. But interesting that you can clearly see the benefits and the, you know, disadvantages of both going after it but also laying back because it's just a matter of how risky do you want to be on that particular golf hole. Yeah, I think this is an interesting test. It's kind of what I was going to expect. Mm -hmm. uh, I was a little surprised that you were able to get three here that <laughs> were too. actually pretty, pretty straight and right and kind of in the middle there. Um, so there's a possibility that you could go after it hard and kind of match that up. But just keep in mind, risk reward. So yeah. maybe do it on a little more open hole. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, but you notice that you probably hit it better when you went after a little harder when you're trying to do mm -hmm. kind of your normal swing 
Control swing for sure, definitely one out though. Oh yeah, yeah. I think so too. Yeah. But uh, this is very interesting, and again, hopefully golfers maybe learn something from this one. This was a good one. Yeah, so it's important to come into second swing to get fit for your, your driver because notice a difference here in club speed. So we have kind of a, about a 13 mile an hour club speed range in speed. If the swing speed is 180 miles an hour, you're going to need a heavier, stiffer golf shaft to get that club face to be a little mm -hmm. more square at impact. If you're only swinging at 105, 106 miles an hour, you probably don't need that golf shaft that's going to be as stiff and uh, lower torque, mm -hmm. per se, and give you a bit, little better control. A lot of people will say, play the lightest golf shaft that you can control. Um, keep that in mind. Obviously, you can't switch out the, go the golf shaft during a round. Right. But keep in mind, however you generally swing your golf club, whether that's fast, whether that's slow, that's the golf shaft that we are going to fit you into, and that's what we work on with the customers when we're coming in and say, hey, please swing. I know it's a simulator, but please swing with your club speed of how you would do out on the golf mm -hmm. course. Yeah. So it's important to come in and get fit with whatever speed that you normally swing your driver at, and a second swing, we can definitely help you out.